Hi guys, it's Ouch 110. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Yeah. Today I'm here to talk to you about my five favorite fragrances from the brand Electimus. What has prompted this video is I was recently invited to a launch event for this brand and I, they had just released two new fragrances and it was a whole, you know, come smell the new fragrances thing. And I went and it was really good fun. Met some really cool people. I love going to perfume events. Who would not, right? Anyway, at the event, I received samples of all of their fragrances. They have 21, I believe. I've been behind the scenes, sniffing things out, trying them out, um, sometimes getting overwhelmed by them. So I've decided to do the five fragrances from them that stuck out and see if any of these might interest any of you. So let's talk a little bit about Electimus. They are a UK brand and their inspiration is the Romans. A little bit about gods, um, battles, invasions, uh, stuff like that really. Uh, and Electimus is, means to choose the best. Elect is to choose uh, and Imus I guess means the best. They have five lines within their 20 fragrances and the ones that I've chosen come from a couple of different ones. They are considered a luxury brand so you do expect luxury brand prices from them um, but I had a great time at the event. It was really good fun so I'll tell you about the five that I really like and yeah we'll just we'll just get on with it okay. So the first one I'm going to start with is called Patchouli of the Underworld and this actually was one of the two new ones that they launched at the event. It's in a collection called the Consort Collection and this, these two fragrances are both centred around patchouli or that's kind of the core of them. It's about Persephone and Pluto and they were made by two different perfumers so each got to do their own take on patchouli. And this one was actually one of my favourite ones I smelled at the event. I didn't smell all 20 at the event because you would have just had your nose broken. So I smelled the two new ones, of course, and this one was the one that stuck out. The other one, Persephone's Patchouli, is the real patchouli, patchouli, lover's patchouli. It's really about that. This one somehow is softer. Even though the description is about Pluto and the underworld, they wanted to create a black patchouli, like a panther and very slinky. I'll give you the notes. It's, the top notes is Cistus Oil, Black Pepper and Smoke Fusion. The middle notes are patchouli, of course, leather and carnation. And then the base notes are labdanum, styrax and benzoin. So I've just sprayed it on this card again. And I, I really like this. This is, for me, I, I wouldn't immediately put this as a patchouli perfume. It's not the first thing that jumps out at me. What jumps out more is a nice kind of soft, playful, ambery leather for me. You have castorium in here, which gives a little bit of leatheriness. It's green, kind of foresty, but the patchouli and labdanum are creating an ambery feeling here. The labdanum is softening everything. So I wouldn't say it's dark or a black patchouli. I think the other one is, is closer to that, if I'm honest. This one for me was nice. It's, it's ve they're very different from each other, the two consort collection perfumes. But I've really enjoyed wearing this one. I don't really get any pepper or smoke from it, unfortunately. But if you like the softer side of patchouli, you could try this one out. Mm, the leather is soft. It's not a dark leather either. But you've got Styrax here, which is another soft note as well. And yeah, I really like this. It's really pleasant and it's not an aggressive patchouli, which is why it's one of my favourite ones on the list. Let's talk about the next one. So the next one is called Pomona Vitalis. And this one actually launched after the event. This is a new one, even newer than the two patchouli ones. And this is part of their, it's called the Eternal Collection. It's the main line. It's the one that has the most fragrances in it. And Pomona, or Pomona, I'm probably saying that wrong. I don't know much about Roman mythology. <laughs> but she's a, uh, ro they call it a, her a rosy-cheeked, is it rosy-cheeked goddess? I've got my notes here, bear with me. Rosy-cheeked goddess of gardens and orchards. And this one stuck out to me because of its playfulness. I'll give you the notes. Top notes are Calabrian bergamot, lychee, almond, strawberry, and apple. The heart notes has have two two kinds of I can't speak 
two types of rose. It has Bulgarian rose and Moroccan rose absolute, and then it has geranium as well. So it's a rosy affair all around. And then the base is uh, Siam Benzoin, vanilla, Sri Lankan sandalwood, Honduras Styrax and Indonesian patchouli. So this one is ultimately a bouncy soft rose with lots of other fruity things happening. It does have an almost minty feeling to it, but that to me is coming from geranium. The roses are so fluffy and cute in here and I, it just makes me really happy. But then you have this strawberry and lychee. It's kind of like, almost like a rose daiquiri kind of smell. It's really fun, it is very soft and it does make me think of those, those Roman paintings where you've got cherubs with the little, you know, the little rosy cheeked cherubs. It makes me think of that. It was a nice playful one because a lot of their fragrances are centered around oud. A lot of them feel like they are aimed at the Middle Eastern clientele. So the ones I've picked are kind of separate from that. So I really like this. It's the newest one. Playful, sweet, not overly sweet and a solid good kind of dusky pink rose perfume with sparks of fun fruits around it. So that's Pomona Vitalis. I hope I said that right. The next one is called Sylvanus, and this is also part of the Eternal Collection, which is the main one. Now this one I have to talk about because I will say, uh, sniffing all 20 of the fragrances from Electimus, there was a lot of crossover with Saffron Rose Oud. I did feel like maybe half of the fragrances felt that way. When you have saffron rose oud in a perfume, it's so distinct, you know, it's something that that sort of accord or that collection of notes really makes its mark on a fragrance. So this one is one of those, but it's my favorite of the saffron rose ouds that I smelled. And Sylvanus was god or is god of the forests and untamed land, maybe. And the reason I chose this one it is similar to a lot of the other Saffron Rose Ouds in the collection, but this one stuck out for being the sharpest and the punchiest, and it has rosewood in it. So it's Saffron Oud and Clove in the top. Then you have Sandalwood, Cedarwood, Rosewood, and Lily of the Valley. And the base notes are Ambergris and White Musk. I like the punchy sharpness of rosewood in this, along with Saffron and Oud. There's no rose in this one, which is probably why I picked it out because it does stick out a little bit from the other saffron oud ones. And I like it, it's got the medicinal part of oud and the oud in here is super sharp. It's a real crisp, woody fragrance with a little bit of spice. Definitely feels extremely Middle Eastern, you know? It's definitely got that vibe and I kind of like it. It's got this classy elegance to it, but it's got a bit of edge. There's almost a, a second medicinal thing that I feel in here that isn't from the oud. And it's not from the saffron either. It's nice, this one. I like it. And I had to get through a lot of saffron ouds to settle on this one as being my favourite from that sort of feel. So that's Sylvanus. I'm going to end on my favourite one last. But the next one is from their Nero collection. Nero's a Roman emperor. Uh, and this one's called Black Caviar. This one I did try at the event as well, and it did stick out. Nero was the emperor of the arts, apparently, and everything decadent, and that's what the Nero collection is about, I think. It's about a little bit more exquisiteness, I would say. It's really weird that I would pick out an aquatic as a favorite, because I don't really do aquatics. I find a lot of them too harsh. Marine things are not my personal favorite thing to smell, but this one's done really well and it's definitely got some something interesting going on. It's definitely on the softer side of aquatic. The top notes are caviar and agar wood and cedar wood. The heart is lavender, sage, rosemary, and the base note is vet, vet, base notes are vetiver and patchouli. This one has a distinctive saltiness. Saltiness in perfume is really hard to describe sometimes and it's even really hard to pinpoint sometimes but in here that salty texture is so apparent here and I really like it. Paired together with these aromatic herbal notes there's, it's, there's a cooling effect in amongst a softly salty aquatic feeling 
and it's really pleasant. This is an aquatic that I would wear. I wonder how they made the caviar accord. I have no idea. Perfumers have many tricks nowadays, but this one I've really enjoyed. It's soft smelling, but it projects really well. I put this one on my skin multiple times because it was one of my favorites. I've worn all of these and yeah, it's a, a herbal aquatic. It's got spark from herbs and then it has a salty caviar like a uh, sort of ambergris, seaweedy almost base. So I'm gonna move on to my favorite and then I'll wrap up the video. So the number one spot for me goes to a perfume called Vixair. And this one I've worn, it's, uh, it's actually nearly gone, as you can see. This is my favorite. I've been trying to settle on my favorite for a while. This one is also part of the Nero collection. And this one stands out because for me, it's a floral that is different from all of the others. It's really pleasant, this one. Let me give you the notes. This one is mandarin, bergamot, orange blossom, grapefruit, and ylang ylang. Maybe that's why I like it, ylang ylang. The heart notes are jasmine, iris, violet, gardenia, and heliotrope. Lots of kind of floral notes going on here. And then it says woody powdery base, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, tonka, vanilla, and amber. So I like most of the things that are in this perfume. Although it doesn't smell like any of them in particular. This one is such a toughie because there's a lot of things happening and it's seamlessly blended into one smell. If I really, really try, I can pick out violet and iris in here. Not so much the white flowers. I almost feel like there's a plum note in here somewhere. It's, it's got an almost 80s floral feel to it. And I think that's another part of the reason why I like this one. It's just really pleasant. You've got a musky sweet base on it that isn't too typical. It, it feels to me like there's a tiny, tiny, when it dries especially, tiny, tiny whispers of poison by Dior but only in the subtlest way. Don't think this is gonna be a dupe or a replacement for Poison because you know, Poison's the queen. But yeah, I like it. I almost feel sometimes a little bit of, I, I wanna say an anise licorice thing, but softened and placed right in the middle of all of these flowers as well. I did actually do a live stream with my friend Claire uh, after the event and we talked about this. Anyone on Facebook would have seen that. We are in a little bit of a state, not gonna lie. We'd had a few too many drinks. We always do when we meet. Hi Claire. But yeah, this one's, I've settled on this one as my favorite. It's, a lot of the other ones are floral from roses. And in this one, it's the first one that stood out as me thinking, oh, it's floral in a different way. So I've chosen the ones that stick out for their own reasons in amongst a sea of just quite a lot of saffron and oud. So yeah, that's Vix Air by Electimus. That's it guys, these are my five favorite fragrances from Electimus. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any, which ones are your favorites. Uh, maybe I can revisit some and try and discover them. Uh, but it's taken me a while to get through 20 and form opinions. So I'm glad that I've done it and it's nice to talk about a UK brand. So that's it guys, I'm Arch Romano, trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.